Big thanks to Kamada Joe for sponsoring this episode. Can I pull off perfect pulled pork? Let's find out. I have never done a pulled pork before. I know, I know, it's weird. But also, it's inevitable that at one point in my life, I'm gonna do pulled pork. So I've bought a beautiful pulled pork, and this is a Levar pork shoulder. It's also known as a Boston butt. It's commonly used for pulled pork, and it has great intermuscular fat. It has great marbling. It's just a beautiful piece of meat. I don't wanna do this with machines and all. This is my first pulled pork, and I wanna keep it authentic. As authentic as can be. So no machines, I'm gonna cook it on the KJ. But I also uh, brought this. And in the story of pulled pork, this is like the old school cowboy style pulled pork. I'm really excited to do this. Jim is here, he's also excited. So let's get started. For seasoning, we're gonna keep it simple. Just salt and pepper. I'll start with some coarse fleur de sel, which is a light sea salt. And then some crushed black pepper. And of course, we're gonna do both sides. Now it's time to fire up the Big Joe. So I fired up my grill, I put some charcoal in, put some fire starters in and light them up. Now we're currently running at 100 degrees Celsius and uh, the barbecue is getting kind of warm. I've put my Dutch oven on it because it needs to get up to temperature and it's gonna take a while. So my pan is up to temperature, I'm gonna take it out, take out the grill grates, spread out the charcoal a little bit, put in the KJ Spider and place my Dutch oven back in. Now I'm gonna put in a little bit of olive oil. It's cold, it's cold, but it's coming. You got all these new problems. Then I'm gonna sear off my pork shoulder. When it's nice and seared, you wanna take out your pork, throw in four sliced shallots, eight garlic cloves, and some slices of ginger. The ginger will add an amazing flavor. What we're doing here is creating the base of our gravy. Once that's getting nice and soft, you wanna add some star anise. Star anise has licorice flavor. Now you wanna add a cup of chicken stock, two tablespoons of sweet soy sauce, I'm using ABC, and a teaspoon of regular soy sauce. Now let those flavors all come together. Now I'm gonna add some unbroken scallions. All these flavors will go inside our pork, and it's gonna be beautiful. Place our pork on top, put the lid on, and now we'll let this brace at a temperature of 180 degrees Celsius. Are you excited? Yeah. So what you normally would, would have done now is create a coleslaw. I wanna talk about coleslaws. Because I believe that in my opinion, the coleslaw, oh man, I'm gonna make so much people angry. I don't like the coleslaw. I'm gonna be completely honest. I like, I, I get it, it adds acidity. I am not planning on eating three, four, five of these sandwiches. I wanna have one big sandwich and one, I wanna taste all that pork. So I'm gonna skip the coleslaw, but I'm gonna make something different and it's gonna be amazing. I'm going to fry onions. It slides into a white onion, just enough to see my blade on the other side. Once you have your onion rings, you wanna take a bowl and add buttermilk. Now for the Dutchies here, we don't actually have buttermilk. It's called Garner milk. I'm gonna add some paprika powder to it. I'm not sure why, I just thought it was an amazing idea. Around the tablespoon will do. Mix that up, now get your onions in and let them soak up all that buttermilk. Set it aside in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. Then take them out, and here we have our onion breading station. We have a cast iron pan that we're gonna heat up with some clarified butter. We have our flour, our egg, our panko, which is the Japanese equivalent of breadcrumbs, and our cooling rack. First, we're gonna heat up some butter. I'm gonna coat it in each item. First, I'm gonna take out the onions, let the excess buttermilk drip off, coat them in flour, coat them in the egg, and then in the panko and then start frying in the butter. Look for the golden brown crust and then take them out on the cooling rack. Once that's done, you end up with beautiful onion rings. All we need now for a beautiful pulled pork is some sauce. So I'm gonna start with one part mayonnaise, a quarter part ketchup, a tablespoon of chili powder, a teaspoon of pepper, a pinch of salt, and some splashes of lemon to your own taste. Now mix it up and you have yourself a beautiful chili mayonnaise. Our pork shoulder has been bracing for three hours. After an hour or so, you have to keep checking on the fluids inside. Now you have a choice. You can add a little bit more of chicken stock. I recommend that you use water. The water will evaporate, so you keep on having that same taste profile that you had before. Every now and then you have to rotate your pork shoulder, and when you're not looking at it, keep the lid on. 
After around three hours, it should be done and you have to take it off. Oh, I'm so excited. I had a look at it and it's looking awesome. I'm gonna show you. I honestly am super excited because this might be my, my best result in barbecue ever. Last time it was my rib roast. I was really proud of the rib roast. This, this, this is amazing, man. This is my first pulled pork. The smell is amazing. It's like an Asian smell, but it's still just, just a pulled pork that you would have expected in texture. We just started with this beautiful pork shoulder and we seasoned it. Then we seared it in our Dutch oven, created an amazing Asian style gravy. Then I braised my pork shoulder for three hours. And then finally having this result, I'm, I'm super excited. There's only one thing left to do and that's just build a beautiful, amazing, crazy, crazy sandwich. It makes me so happy. Look at this. Look at, oh, I wish, I, I wish you could smell this. This is amazing. This is a dream come true. That, that gravy is gonna, is gonna make a big difference. You need that gravy. Now I get it. I finally get it why people need that gravy. Okay, okay, okay. Gonna be serious now. I'm gonna plate up. Now we're gonna do this thing with some Turkish bread. But I don't want too much bread because, hey, come on, we're eating pork. Of course, a big bunch of pork. Some might think that is, it's too much, but no, it's not, it's not. Then a little bit more of that gravy because I can't help myself. Then you add your crispy deep fried onion and of course your chili mayo, which contains acidity. So you don't need that coleslaw. And I'll suggest that you just put the cap on because otherwise it will just explode. I'm speechless, but I'm gonna eat it straight away. Here we go. This is the dream. This is the dream. I dreamt about this. No coleslaw, no nonsense. A little bit of acidity because of the sauce. And then for the rest, it's all goodness. Onion rings and pork. That's what you want in life. This looks like the dream. <laughs> so insanely big. Oh man. I was hungry all the time, but now finally can taste it. Let's go. Sorry, Roel. This is the best one yet, and I've created it myself. Sorry, Roel. You did it. <laughs> yeah, this is your best creation. This is it. I'm so happy, man. You don't need four sandwiches. You just need one very big sandwich. This one is crazy good. This is it, Marcy. Yeah, I hate to break it to Roel. It's just better. That little spook park was also. Yeah, of course, of course. But this of is course. like new, like something else to think about. Without the coleslaw, it's mm. fresh. What are you doing? More sauce. Yeah, I kind of I, I, I love get it. it. I think that, uh, in my opinion, the onion rings, they make up for maybe 40% of the whole sandwich. It's, yeah. it's an important part. I'm gonna um, sit in that corner, cry because I can't. I can't, I can't make it better than this. Okay. So, so you can... Um, Something is happening right no. here. I, I'm not sure what, but it's like kind of a new video. Or an old video. I don't know what you put in there, but it's, uh, it's there. Click on it. See you guys next time. Until then. It's makkelijk. And keep on grilling. <laughs>